Before I start showing my slides, I just want you to think back to where you were 15 years ago. So think back to 2004. And basically, in 2004, Ireland had the largest offshore wind in the world. So Arklow Bank uh, off the coast of Wexford had the largest offshore wind uh, project in the world. So I suppose, given the industry perspective, uh, maybe it's a challenge. Uh, as a nation, Ireland normally punches well above its weight in sporting, and uh, if you look at Patrick's Day, it's nearly an international event. Um, so maybe that's laying down the law. Let's come back in 5, 10, 15 years and see can we reclaim our original title that we had in 2004. So just a little bit about DP Energy. Uh, it was started over 25 years ago by Simon and Maureen Di Pietro. Started with onshore wind in the UK and Ireland and diversified into tidal and uh, marine in about 2008. We cover a um, number of jurisdictions, UK and Ireland, uh, Australia for onshore wind and solar and Canada for um, uh, tidal and uh, solar developments as well as tidal developments in Northern Ireland and in Scotland. Um, just, I suppose, why we're here today, it's already been mentioned, but just in terms of climate change, there's a fantastic, uh, vibrant video uh, produced by NASA in terms of the temperature change from the 1800s, which is the top blue slide, to where we are in 2017, uh, leading on to the IPPC report, uh, and there's a new report coming out which is going to be discussed at uh, an event in September in terms of what do we do with uh, this 1.5 uh, degree change and what are the implications for policymakers. Uh, in May, earlier on this year, it was encouraging that our government declared a climate emergency, uh, led to the Climate Action Plan and the IWEA brief that they did and the uh, videos that David did, uh, which summarised the action plans uh, for, for all of us. Um, and I suppose more recently as well, the events that are happening worldwide in terms of the uh, fires in Brazil, 80,000 fires in the rainforest, you know, which is our carbon sink up until now, um, and these have been getting progressively worse. Um, so that's, I suppose, setting the scene uh, as to, to why the reasons for, for the development of the offshore uh, renewable industry in Ireland. If you look at the pipeline projects, um, we have uh, we have over 9.5 gigawatts. The, the developments in the map are just those in the public domain. There's a lot more uh, that are being developed. Um, our at least target is 3.5 gigawatts. I suppose that's dependent on achieving. Um, uh, targets in onshore, in solar and in onshore wind. Um, we can realise 3.5 gigawatts, but uh, developers, turbine manufacturers, supply chains, we're looking at Ireland and we have, we have an amazing uh, potential to realise, um, hence you know, the, the target of uh, the world leader. Uh, if you look at the East Coast, uh, the fixed, uh, there's eight gigawatts there of fixed. Um, and if you look at, um, sorry, total fixed in, in that map is eight gigawatts and the East Coast is 6.6. 6. If you look at, I suppose, my interpretation of what they meant by legacy, that's two gigawatts. Um, and we're looking for the enduring uh, projects. It's a 10-year sort of indicative program that has been discussed. Um, and put forward to government. So we're 2019 now, so to, it's challenging. It's a challenging timeline to achieve that um, uh, 2030 targets. So um, there's no hanging about, basically. Uh, my complicated fidget spinner. Uh, just a few industry challenges. Uh, thankfully, previous speakers have made some of the points already. Just in terms of market and regulatory, um, uh, there is a, a vast array of policy documents, consultation documents, legislation. Uh, we're focused a lot in terms of the new legislation which is out, the NPDM and the implications of that. But there's also the range that Philip mentioned in his uh, presentation and also the Maritime Jurisdiction Bill, which came out at the same time as the NPDM, and also the Marine Protected Areas designation uh, under the National Biodiversity Action Plan uh, requires to have marine protected areas uh, by 2021. So as an industry, we have to be mindful of these. 
as well, it's encouraging from government that they've already started to resource uh, departments and have recruited um, individuals into uh, key positions. I suppose we need more, you know, as was outlined in the bill, uh, on board Planola will need resourcing, uh, local authorities, if they're going to have an enforcement role, will need resourcing. Um, the MPWS, uh, my understanding as of last year, there was two people who uh, were dedicated to offshore and they will have a key role in consenting. Um, so the UK, as part of the sector deal, one of the key uh, parts that was critical to consenting and the delays in consenting um, was resourcing, was resourcing at a, a government level. So that's another action I think that needs to be taken on board. Um, I suppose DP projects ourselves, you know, we thought that projects that were, had been told that were streamlined uh, and would get consent within nine months and three years later we're still waiting. Um, Moving on to site acquisition, uh, the planning interest was uh, discussed by Ainsley, and again, I'm not a lawyer, but my understanding is that uh, for the planning interest, which is the first step as part of the enduring projects uh, to, um, to, to move forward, that also has a material change uh, listed on it. So I'll be interested if you look at what David said earlier in terms of technology development for fixed and how they've moved from um, six, you know, two, four, six, now eight megawatts for the fixed technology. Um, it will be interesting how that material change will be in the planning when you consider that is the start of your 10-year program and where you're going to be five years later in terms of fixed or even in terms of floating technology, which brings me on to the technology. East Coast, uh, the depths that were there, they're attractive to, um, at the moment, the way its technology is going for, uh, for fixed technology, but we have, it's the island of Ireland that we have. So our resource scale that we're talking about, uh, the 9.5 gigawatt, uh, I think David had 10.2 earlier on uh, today. Um, we are going to get into cumulative impact assessment issues in terms of uh, appropriate assessment and in terms of imperative reasons for overriding public interest, not an acronym that sticks in my head, I have to say. Um, but they are going to be challenges. I suppose we can apply lessons learned from other jurisdictions in that regard. Uh, in relation to grid, there is um, a lot of work happening in grid at the moment. The air grid tender out looking for consultants to advise in terms of the decentralized, centralized or hybrid approach. Um, uh, the, the decentralised approach, which is what we have in the UK uh, and previously for onshore wind uh, in Ireland, it's probably going to look more likely that it would be that for the legacy projects, but whether it will evolve into the centralised approach for the um, uh, enduring project, I suppose, remains to be seen. Um, Agrid also had the South Coast study, which uh, was fantastic, and I know that I, we are working on... Um, trying to get the information that went into tomorrow's energy scenarios uh, in terms of the system needs assessment document that would um, inform an all-Ireland approach, so similar to the East Coast study, but for an all-Ireland approach. Um, finance, uh, Res 1 auction, a lot of work going into that, a lot of discussions happening at the moment in terms of what that's going to be. I know in the UK, in the early days of Tidal, they ring-fenced it, uh, which enabled uh, the, the Tidal technology to develop. Sadly, they took away that ring-fencing, which is probably one of the reasons why the industry hasn't developed as it thought it would in the UK. Um, can solar compete with onshore wind? Can fixed compete with floating? Um, all of these remains to be seen. Supply chain, we have a supply chain in Ireland. Uh, David made the point in terms of an established supply chain, how that's going to impact into the res auctions uh, and the expectation that we would be able to compete with uh, round four auctions, which I think are due out next week in the UK. Um, unlikely, uh, and I think that needs to be a, 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 a help, you know, a realistic uh, um, by government and by the industry competing. Um, on public consultation, um, a lot of work had done in terms of onshore wind, in terms of community and community supports. 
um, I suppose, the challenge in terms of the, the funds that would be generated with offshore winds and offshore wind and the management of those funds. Um, and I suppose in terms of the discussion earlier on today, public consultation, you know, what people think of renewable energy um, and how we go forward. And we'll overcome all of those challenges and hopefully move on to operations, which has its own challenges. So just my last slide, how do we overcome those challenges? DP and a range of other uh, developers, supply chain, um, turbine manufacturers are members of IWEA and active in the committees and the working groups. Um, we respond to, uh, DP respond to government consultations and feed into the processes with IWEA and uh, also with the Marine Renewables Industry Association. Uh, stakeholder engagement is critical for our own developments uh, to start on the ground. Um, and we're also uh, one of the 10 industry partners uh, with on the Airwind project, which is a joint industry project led by UCC, and it's looking at offshore wind, investigating suitable areas, um, looking at future technologies. So there's an interesting work package in terms of uh, hydrogen storage and you know how we can um, uh, how that will evolve hopefully in Ireland. It also has an advisory group made up of the two government departments, SEA. Uh, Geological Survey of Ireland and Marine Institute. Um, so slightly ahead of time, many thanks for your uh, uh, attention and uh, looking forward to answering any questions you may have.